Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing my top 20 songs of all time. It's going to be a two-part series. I'm going to be going from 20 to 11 today and then next, uh, next video is going to be from number 10 to number 1. And I picked some really great songs. I've been thinking about it for quite a while. I know what's going to happen though. I am going to read the comments and you all are going to name some killer songs and I'm going to be questioning myself uh, for why I didn't name that one. So I know that's going to happen, but I'm just going to stick with what I have. And, uh, you know, this has just been a crazy time. Uh, my family has been through so much, as all of us have, with this coronavirus. So I just want to say on a personal note to everyone who left really nice messages last week, you are the best. I really appreciate it. I read every comment. It meant so much to me. Uh, last week after I made my video, my dad died unexpectedly. It was a huge shock for all of us. And because of the coronavirus, we had to just have his funeral with just immediate family. He was a retired police officer of 32 years. And he did not get the fanfare he deserved. He did not get the visitation. Um, it was just a really sad event. Thankfully, on a personal note, my relationship with my dad was the best it had ever been. I even got to talk to him and tell him I loved him the day he died. So I'm so thankful for where uh, our relationship had went and what we had been able to build over the years. So, also, my daughter's wedding had been canceled. I will discuss a little bit more about that on my next video. Uh, the plans are still fluid, things are still um, in the works, but my daughter uh, is a class act and she said, you know what, the show must go on. So we are um, planning a new wedding, totally different, going to be just immediate family, not going to be very many people. We are going to be socially distant and very responsible. So having said that, let me go ahead and get started to the video and the topic at hand. My number 20 song favorite song of all time is from a, song, a band, a Dutch band, and this is a song from 1982, and it is from the album Cut by Golden Earring. It is a song called The Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone was an amazing song. It clocks in at a little bit less than eight minutes. I love the long version. The short version for me isn't near as good. I love the guitar. I love the intro. I love the eerie lyrics and the way they're delivered. This song was inspired by Robert Lud Ludlum's The Born Identity book. Uh, he read the book and was inspired to write the song. And the, t the title is inspired by the uh, television series Twilight Zone. And I've just always loved the song. It's always been great. I have a wonderful memory of running track when I was in middle school. And I had a, a relay race that I was in. It was a pretty long distance thing. And back before um, we had iPods or any listening devices, or at least anything that I had, I had to listen to songs in my head to motivate me. And when I was running that relay race, for some reason, this song was the one that was in my head when I was running. I absolutely love it. And uh, it's number 20, and it is The Twilight Zone by Golden Earring. And I just really love it. Number 19 is by Kings of Leon. It is a song called You Somebody, and it was from 2008. I absolutely love that song. It's just epic, the way it builds. The guitar's incredible. Uh, the way he sings the lyrics are wonderful. That was a huge hit. It swept the Grammys that year. And I will just always remember being at a swim club with my daughter when she was really little and... Uh, just hearing this song all summer long, it brings back such wonderful memories. But, you know, it's just a well-crafted song. It's absolutely great. And all I have is the single, that's all I need from Kings of Leon uh, at the moment. But I really love You Somebody by Kings of Leon. It comes in at number 19 on my favorite songs of all time list. At number 18 is the zombies. I have talked about the album Odyssey and Oracle very many times on my channel. I absolutely love the album. It's an entire album listening experience. However, there is a song on here that really stands out to me and I know most people would say time of the season, but for me my favorite is 
Care of Cell 44. And I just absolutely love the cheeriness and the absolute brilliant vocals of Colin Bloomstone. He has one of the best voices, most underrated voices. He is absolutely incredible. I love the cheeriness uh, of the song, and yet he is singing a, about writing a letter to his girlfriend while she is serving time in prison. So it's really cheery about something really sad. I really love the juxtaposition of it all. I just think it's really just a really good song. Shows off the vocals. And even though it's about something kind of uh, sad or maybe a little depressing, it instantly puts me in a good mood when I hear it. So at number 18 from the album Odyssey and Oracle is Care of Cell 44 by the Zombies. This one is an absolute classic for me at number 17, Edge of 17. I just absolutely love the guitar work that is done on this one. I cannot imagine how exhausted the guitarist was after recording the song Edge of 17. It is just absolutely amazing. I love the way Stevie Nicks sings. I love her lyrics. It's so good. And it just really brings me right back to spring break when I was uh, in middle school. Absolutely killer song. And I never knew this before, but uh, the riff, the guitar riff was inspired by the police song, Bring On The Night. And I've just always loved it. And I do want to give an honorable mention. I really love the song, uh, Leather and Lace, but even more so, my favorite duet of all time is Stop Dragging My Heart Around by Tom Petty and Stevie Nicks. That is also on this album and I really love it. But the one I'm talking about right now is number 17, Edge of 17 by Stevie Nicks. Just an absolutely killer song. One of my favorites of all time. At number 16 is Layla by Derek and the Dominoes. Just a really beautiful song. Great lyrics. The guitar playing is just absolutely phenomenal. The chemistry between Eric Clapton and Dwayne Allman in the studio when they were playing the guitars is just legendary. Absolutely incredible. I love the the keyboards at the end are so incredible. I love long songs like this. This was really wonderful. Eric Clapton and John, uh, I'm sorry, Jim Gordon wrote this song and it was inspired by a book but it was also inspired by Eric Clapton's infatuation with Patty Boyd, who had been, he was, she was married to George Harrison at the time, but he was, had a huge crush or an infatuation on her. And that also was part of why he wrote this incredible song. And I really love Layla, just by Derek and the Dominoes. Absolutely incredible song at number 16. At number 15 is a band that I absolutely love. And the song I'm going to choose is going to surprise most of you because there's so many great ones and it is really hard to pick. But uh, this one is probably not everybody's favorite, but for me, it is a true standout. I absolutely love it. It is by Kiss from the legendary album Destroyer. Um, there's just so many great songs on here. Uh, and I want to talk about the song Do You Love Me. That is my favorite Kiss song. Uh, it's It's got a lot of uh, songs that could give it a good run for the money, but I really love this song. I love Paul Stanley wrote it, and I really do think it shows his vulnerabilities. Um, I, You know, may, whether he really had a girlfriend and he was thinking this, or he just made it up. Paul Stanley was one of the biggest um, rock stars at the moment. He was huge. No one was bigger than Kiss at the time, and yet... Paul Stanley was writing a song about a girl uh, wondering, you know, do you love me? Do you love the limousines or my seven inch leather heels, uh, all of the fame and fortune? Do you love all that or do you love me? And I love that he sings um, your backstage pass and black sunglasses make you look just like a queen. Even the fans know your face from all of the magazines, but do you love me? I really love the way he sings that. I love the, the way the, uh, the musicality of it, I think is really incredible. I just really love that at a time when he was at his biggest, he's writing a song about insecurities, about him being the big rock star and wondering, does my girlfriend love me for me or for the lifestyle I provide? 
And uh, I want to give an honorable mention to King of the Nighttime World. I absolutely love how D Detroit Rock City goes into King of the Nighttime World. That is another really great song by Kiss that I absolutely love. I wanted to give an honorable mention for that. But at number 15 is Do You Love Me My Ki by Kiss. Absolutely love that song. At number 14 is, uh, this is a band, it is my daughter's very favorite band of all time. And uh, I love them too. Her very favorite song of all time is by The Killers. It's called Dustland Fairy Tale. An absolutely beautiful song. But my favorite song that enters into number 14 for me is a song called Here With Me. It is from 2012's album Battleborn. Just an incredible album, really great. And I really love the song Here With Me. I think we all can relate to it. I mean, I haven't had my heart broken in a million years. I've been married forever. Thank goodness, I have a great husband. But I think we all can relate to that horrific breakup, whether you went through a divorce or, you know, just a, an incredibly heart-wrenching breakup. His uh, Brandon Flowers haunting lyrics and just everything about this song is so beautiful, so tragic. I absolutely love it. And uh, we all have had that time where we've had a breakup and we're in public and we run into the person that broke our hearts. And uh, instead of coming up towards them and saying something, we act like we don't see them or we just run away. I think I can relate to that so much in the lyrics. This is just a really great song, incredible, and I just really love it. So my number 14 song is The Killers, Here With Me from the Battleborn album. And I want to do an honorable mention because I really love this song too from Foreigner 4, Waiting For A Girl Like You. You know, as tragic as Here With Me is, uh, Waiting For A Girl Like You is joyous. He has found his woman. And I, ever since I was about 11 years old, I have loved this song. I think it's so romantic. I am a romantic kind of girl. And I just think it's such a great, beautiful song. Saying beautifully, everything about it's wonderful. From the very beginning, all the way through the end, I love it. So I want to give a shout out to Foreigner Fours, Waiting for a Girl Like You. And at number 13 is Warrant's Uncle Tom's Cabin from the album Cherry Pie. I love that song. I think it is just absolutely brilliant. The beginning almost sounds a, a little bit of a country twang to it. I love the guitar and just everything about it. And he sings uh, the opening lyrics and then boom, the song transitions into something totally different, takes you by surprise, just takes you on this Wonderful ride. It's absolutely great musicianship, great music, but the lyrics are so brilliant. And Janie Lane does not get enough credit for how incredible of a songwriter he was. And this uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin was supposed to be the first single off of this album, but uh, the uh, record company wanted him to do something different that would be a little more radio friendly, something that would kind of fit into the heavy um, like hair metal type of song, and I hate using the term hair metal, but it's now the way to describe songs from the late 80s and early 90s before Nirvana took over and killed them all. But, you know, he wrote the song Cherry Pie to please the, uh, the record company, but the true gems of this song and what really makes it great. And Cherry Pie was a huge hit, don't get me wrong, it did very well for them, and he, they had a huge hit with it. Probably sold a lot of records. But Uncle Tom's Cabin is really the true gem of this album. I also want to give an honorable mention to I Saw Red. Just another incredible vocal performance from Janie Lane and an incredible song. So my number 12, or I'm sorry, number 13 choice um, of all time is Uncle Tom's Cabin by Warrant. Just an ab absolutely incredible song. At number 12 is my first country song that I'm putting into here, but honestly, it is just a universal song with an incredible meaning. And I'm talking about my number 12 choice, Garth Brooks, The Dance. Just an absolutely beautiful song, and I'm so grateful that I've never lost a significant other. I've never lost a husband or someone I had been dating. But, um, you know, the lyrics just really sum it up. A beautiful meaning. And, you know, I'd, I'm not... Um, 
I can relate to this song, but on a much lower level, I'm not at all uh, relating this to someone. If you've lost a, a husband or wife, I'm not at all comparing this loss. But when I lost my dog a couple of years ago, um, she died of cancer at age seven. She was my first and only dog I've ever had. And she was, she's gonna be the best dog I ever owned. She was absolutely incredible. I absolutely loved her with all my heart. But you know, the meaning of the song I could really relate to when I lost my dog, because if I had known she was gonna die at age seven to cancer, I could have, you know, just moved on and got a dog that was gonna live a lot longer. I'm so glad we don't know what the future holds because had I known she was going to die at age seven, I might have chose something else and I would have missed the incredible relationship I had with my dog. And I'm just so thankful our lives are meant to a uh, chance. We could, I could have missed the pain, but I would have missed the dance. So just an incredibly uh, well-written song, probably one of the best songs ever written, in my opinion. At number 12 is Garth Brooks' The Dance. Again, thank you, Billy Hurst, for giving me this album. Just absolutely incredible. Here is also an honorable mention, a song that I absolutely love, and it is by Don McLean, Vincent. American Pie is the most popular song on here. It was a huge hit for him, but the song Vincent on here is truly my favorite, one of my favorites of all time. I absolutely love it. It is about Vincent Van Gogh. He was an absolutely master, you know, artist, an incredible artist, but he struggled with his uh, sanity. He had schizophrenia, and this beautiful song called Vincent talks about him and his fight for his sanity and unfortunately he lost that battle and committed suicide but I absolutely love the song if you've never heard Vincent by Don McLean look it up and if you do not own this album I highly recommend this album every song on here uh, maybe with the exception of one I'm not real crazy about every song on here is absolutely beautiful get you a real clean really good copy of this album and it's really great and finally, at number 11 is Boston's More Than a Feeling. I know a lot of people say they are so tired of this song, but Tom Schultz is an absolute genius. This is an incredible work of art, just absolute craftsmanship. And just a, it's just a step above most songs. It really is. You go from the acoustic guitar into the bass, into the guitar, and then Brad Delp's incredible talent. He was one of the best singers of all time, in my opinion. I think he's one of the best. I love him. And um, this is just an incredible song. And I know a lot of people get tired of it. And if I think I'm about to get tired of it, I just quit listening to it. I never want to get tired of this song. I think it's so incredible. And I've loved it since it came out when I was a really little girl. I just absolutely think there's just nothing better. The way this song is built and the way they did it. Absolutely genius. So uh, my number 11 choice is More Than a Feeling by Boston. And now I just want to talk really quickly about a controversy that I remember the day my dad... Um, my dad's funeral, we learned that Kenny Rogers had passed away. And, you know, back in the day, there was no one bigger than Kenny Rogers. He was huge. So I want to share a memory I have back from when I was a little girl, back in 1980. Uh, the Grammys were on, and Kenny Rogers' song Lady was up against Christopher Cross' Sailing. And I, you know, out of necessity, not because I wanted to, but I had to sleep with my mom. And she had trouble sleeping, so at night she would listen to talk radio. And she would listen to something out of Pittsburgh, a talk radio show in the middle of the night out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And that night the talk show host was talking about Lady versus Sailing. He played both of the songs. He was on a rant. Uh, Sailing won Song of the Year um, for the Grammys that year. He thought Lady by Kenny Rogers should have won, and he was just absolutely outraged. And the callers that were calling in agreed with him and thought Kenny Rogers' Lady, you know, should have won the Grammy. So uh, I just remember that very well. And at the time, I think I liked Lady better than Sailing, 
But as an adult now, I have really come to appreciate the song Sailing and really love Christopher Cross. So that is my best memory of Kenny Rogers. Absolutely incredible. In the early 80s, he was the man. He was the best, uh, biggest artist at the time. Before Thriller came out and Michael Jackson took over, Kenny Rogers was the biggest artist of the time. So I just really am sad that he passed away and so thankful that, for the music he left behind. Please subscribe to my channel and please leave your comments. Let me know who do you think should have won the Grammy that year, Christopher Cross or Kenny Rogers. I really appreciate each and every one of you and I will see you next time for the top 10 favorite songs of all time. Take care. Bye-bye.